Hi there. I have more video evidence today, perhaps the most incriminating yet, of the deception in the Deep End TV series that was done about me. You probably watched the video I posted where I showed you a collection of glowing birthday videos that were sent to me by the director, producer, and film team. This video reveals some of the deception that was taking place in the actual production of this TV series. And I told you in that video that probably the most frustrating thing is that since the TV series was released, it's only been my word against theirs regarding just how false the TV series is and how manipulatively edited it is. But today I have more proof. We actually did capture some audio content and some visual content from my events. Let's just dive right in, shall we? The first item of proof is the audio from my interaction with Simon from episode one. My team was actually recording. In the deep end, this interaction was edited to make it seem as if I am a megalomaniac that considers my word to be the law and who has no mentors because I consider myself to have no more learning to do. Here are the first seconds of what they showed you in the deep end. Do you spend all your time calling people's BS, right? Is there anyone out of the team that you would have enough respect for that they could challenge you? It's a strange question. Why is that an important question? Hmm? Why? I should have someone above me. Not above you. Like, who do you look up to? to I call? don't look up to anyone. But I, and so I have resistance against that, if I'm being brutally honest. Why? I should have someone above me. It's not going to happen. Is that stubbornness? I wouldn't be particularly aware if I wasn't able to recognize the potential of someone having more awareness than me. I have never met them. Obviously, that makes me look arrogant, close-minded, and angry. Well, in reality, that was a very long interaction with Simon. I was open to his questions, and we spent quite a bit of time talking about it. Here's how that question really played out at the beginning of our conversation, unedited. So, do you spend all your time? Do you spend all your time calling people's BS? Then, aside from people within your team that can call you on your BS, then I'm sure, I'm sure there are some. Is there anyone out of your team? We are her BS. Right. Is there anyone out of the team that you admire that you would be willing to sit with that would be able to, you would have enough respect for that they could challenge you? Strange question. Why is that an important question? Ever heard of Benjamin Smythe? That should be an asshole, but he's pretty smart. Because it, because it came up. Well, I didn't come though. Because it was the topic of um, authority, and I'm in a position myself where I'm the BS caller, and I'm, I've come here because I admired seeing you, and therefore I felt that by being here you would see something that I couldn't see because you have more experience than me. So my question was then around that for you and your growth, which I think is valid for anybody. What do you get to a of awareness where everything in existence becomes that for you? You get to a level of awareness where everything in existence gets like that for you. You don't need one source. Mm. Okay. This is now, answers my question. As you can clearly see, they spliced that exchange so what the audience ultimately saw had no bearing on reality. When the filmmakers lie like that, they're not only harming me, they're harming Simon and all my clients. 
it gets in the way of their healing. And in this way, ultimately, we are all victims of this deception. The second item of proof that I'm going to submit to you is the footage of the water breath exercise you saw in episode three in the swimming pool. This footage was edited to make it look like we're waterboarding people and like people were forced into doing it whether they wanted to or not. In reality, water breath is an emotional release breathwork process. It just happens to be done in water. Fortunately, people were filming my volunteer who was explaining the process to the people and doing a demonstration at that event. The deep end really went out of its way to suggest that the only people who follow my content or who volunteer at my events or who attend them are nutcases. But guess what? This woman who is facilitating the breathwork exercise is a clinical social worker and has over 25 years experience working with people. And one of our attendees filmed her own water breath exercise for you to see. So first, let's watch the footage from the deep end. Now let's watch the footage from the attendees themselves of the exact same experience and see if they match up, shall we? First, we see my volunteer explaining the exercise. <laughs> okay. all, all the way like this, you're gonna be held on both sides. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> see how much her face is under the water when she's doing it? That's what you want to go for. Yeah. And then, yeah, right, yeah. when you go, when you get flipped over, ready? Okay, I'm going to try to support you. Can you take your breath? Okay, ready? Second, we see one participant going through the actual exercise.
third item of proof I'm going to submit to you is footage we took on our company camera of the interaction between myself and Sabrina, which is featured in episode three. The Deep End set up a narrative that my work had harmed Sabrina and that despite her saying that her life had gotten worse since working with me, I was simply unwilling to entertain the notion because no one is allowed to question me. The Deep End also set up the narrative that I am on a mission against people's families. They used Sabrina as the way to drive this idea home, but they had to intentionally edit it to look this way, when the reality is the opposite, in fact. In the film, they edited the footage so that it seems like I tell Sabrina that her life has gotten better since doing my work, and she calls bullshit on it. Here's the clip from the deep end. Things fall apart because they were not true to you. Is my life better now? I don't feel that it is, That's but I want to ask you. That's the thing. Yeah. It is better? Actually, yes. That's bullshit. <laughs> Guess what? This never happened. Would you like to see how the conversation actually went? Is my life better now? I don't feel that it is. That's I didn't ask you. That's the thing. Yeah. It is better? Actually, yes. Is it a lot better? I feel like I've moved from the descent here. Okay, here's a question. This is not a direct reflection of your life, but here's a question. Let's say that I work with a woman who's in a superbly abusive relationship. She's got two little babies, and she lives with a super abusive husband, but who just so happens to be very wealthy. Okay. Now, let's say she finds out this is not the right relationship for me, and I need to, I need to get my kids out of this situation. And so she leaves one of these workshops, and she goes and she brings her two children to a safe house. Do you think she's telling herself two weeks into that situation that things are better? Their life is better. No. But is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This just takes so long. And here's the part where you can see what Sabrina really said bullshit to. Because I want you to set mom. Fuck her. <laughs> okay, so if this is the thing, you can write that down. Why don't I want you to my step mom. Fuck her. I'm not right here. I'm right now. Well, what, what if being a little bit more like her is what stood in between you and the life you want? Oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> Any more like her? Yep. <laughs> Is that what men want? <laughs> no, I'm not telling you to turn into her. Oh my god! Okay. Oh wow, that just sounds horrific. I can have some. Yep, you just saw that. During that interaction, first I was explaining how the process of healing and progress sometimes doesn't feel good, even though it improves your life. Second, I was teaching integration. Sabrina has had a very tense relationship with her stepmother, and I was asking her to entertain the notion that maybe if she took some qualities from her stepmother instead of disowning them, she would be better off. That's what she actually said bullshit to. And my facial reaction is exactly the same as they used in the deep end, from our own angle. That shows both the idea that we were having a fight over whether my processes work or not, and the idea that I'm out to destroy families dead in the water. And now you know what some deliberately malicious editing can do. And now is a really good time to come and get seated. Oh, am I very loud? Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Bix, uh, and I'm working with the film crew who you'll see floating around. We've been filming Teal's events for about two years now, and this is just an amazing, special group. It's it's one of the, the most amazing kind of connective energies that we've seen and something that we always hope to immortalize when we come and film these events is the feeling of excitement and connection and whatever it is that people are coming with 
um, when they come here. So I know at the beginning, Teal entered through the back of the auditorium. Um, we were really hoping to be able to do that a second time uh, now after lunch and reinvigorate it afterwards. Um, and I would love to throw... Oh, I think some folks are coming in, but I would just ask if folks can can stay where they're seated and not go into the aisles. Once we get started, that would be super. Um, quickly, just by show of energy, how are people feeling about coming back? <laughs> That's a really good start. Okay, if that's like a four. I'm <laughs> That's an energetic four. Um, okay, sweet. So in a couple minutes, um, we're going to have Teal come back out. And I would just encourage everyone. I know everyone is coming from a really different place. And, and everyone brings a really special energy to these events. And I would love to just hear from you all, from whatever you have in you, how you feel about Teal, how much you love Teal, and how excited you are to come in today. So, uh, hey, David, let me know when we're good to go. It is, it is scary, by the way, in front of this many people, I will tell you. Everyone who comes on stage, like, hats off. Good to go? All right, team. Okay, if everyone can just get seated. Put your hands, voices, and energies together to welcome back to the stage, Teal Swan. Let's hear it. She's coming. I wish that I had been filming literally every single thing that they filmed for three years, including all of the personal life interactions that I had with my team and my friends and my family members, so that I could physically show you the difference. Because the difference that you would have in front of you would be as drastically different or even more so than what they showed you in the deep end. The director, John Casby, has been admitting in his public interviews that he didn't edit this film to show the audience what actually happens on a day-to-day -day basis. What he says is that he edited it to show the audience what things felt like to him specifically. So, here's my question to you. Having heard and seen it, the unedited versus the edited, does it feel the same to you? Does it feel the way he cut it in the deep end? Or did he manage to fool you at the expense of myself and the expense of everyone featured in this TV series? Nothing I will be able to dig up as proof can do for you what seeing the actual footage that the director and producer and film team shot will do for you. So I must ask you to please share this video with the people that you know so that the media does not keep getting away with this kind of absolute abuse and so that we can put pressure on them to show the actual unedited footage that they filmed and use the hashtag, hashtag release the footage. Thank you.